Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 40 on Now You Know. All right, so Tesla has become the fourth largest car company in the world. This is super exciting. So Tesla's Didn't market, we just talk about we, them we being... We are constantly talking about how they are, you know, surpassing other car manufacturers. Who did they just surpass? They just surpassed BMW to become the fourth largest. So Tesla's market cap has just hit $61.6 billion um, versus BMW's $61.2 billion. Again, market cap is the number of shares multiplied by the price of the shares. Yeah, and the shares have been on a tear re recently, hitting all-time highs. So, you know, obviously share prices can go up and down, but this gives you some idea of how big the company is in terms of market capitalization. Now, um, they still have a ways to go to become the number one. Hey, who's number one? Uh, number one is Toyota with 157 billion. Wow. Um, Daimler is 70 billion and VW is 68 billion. Oh, so, so those are reachable. They're really close. They could become the second largest car uh, manufacturer by, okay. by market cap, wow. you know, in the conceivable future, I yeah. think, which is astounding. Yeah. That is astounding. Now, uh, also astounding is that Tesla was just added to the Fortune 500 list. Now, how do you get on the list? It is not market cap, okay. which um, I think you and I were thinking for a really long time. Yeah. Um, it's actually ranked by revenue. Okay. And revenue meaning like profit or? Revenue meaning uh, gross revenue. Oh, okay. Because Tesla lost money last year. Right. But so I was wondering how they got on the list, but they made seven billion dollars in revenue. Yes. And so that got them on the list. In fact, they're number three hundred and eighty three on the list. So Tesla is the first new car manufacturer ever to join the list. Wow. Yeah, because I mean, when Fortune 500 uh, first published its list, uh, there were five U.S. automakers. Um, on and that the was list. back in 1955, I believe. Right. And by 1999, there were only two on the Fortune 500. List. Oh, Ford and GM. Right. Wow. So Tesla basically just surpassed NVIDIA, which was at uh, number 387, and they're coming up to Netflix, which is uh, number 314. There, mm -hmm. are, there are other companies in there, but these so, are some ones that you might Yeah, recognize. to give you some idea, there's a lot of companies that are stacked in this range of 7 or $8 billion in revenue. Uh, Netflix has $8.7 billion in revenue, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be inconceivable for next year for Tesla to go by Netflix because Netflix is pretty much an established company. They don't have a whole lot more growth they can they can get. Whereas right. Tesla is a tiny, tiny company. They can sell a lot more Teslas. Oh, absolutely. So and that... battery packs and solar panels and all that. Right. So superchargers are now going to be coming off the grid. Um, this is in response to a tweet from David Kennedy who said, unfortunately, I can stand at the Tesla superchargers and see the coal plant. Uh, play the shell game all you want. These are coal powered. So I guess you'd call it a mean tweet. Mm -hmm. But I mean, fair enough. Having uh, superchargers that are connected to the grid does mean that these aren't 100% solar powered uh, superchargers, right. which is uh, one of the things that uh, Elon had promised. Um, and, and so we get this question all the time. Like right. when I plug into a supercharger, where's that energy coming from? So right. what did Elon say? Um, Elon said that all superchargers are being converted to solar slash battery power. Over time, almost all will disconnect from the electricity grid. Wow. So that was a tweet from Elon. Wow. So that means that, I mean, we don't have a time frame on this tweet, but that that's his intention is to put like battery, I assume like put power packs at, at the superchargers and put solar cells. I would assume so. I mean, either, either that or I would imagine that he's going to try and like offset it somewhere that makes uh, more economic sense. But again, I think that it would be really nice to have, you know, the battery packs right there and the solar panels right there. We'll have to see what, you know, if he can do that to all stations. Cause I mean, I know that some are in locations where there might not be enough room for enough solar panels. Again, this just goes to what an amazing company. They're not resting on their laurels. They're not just saying, oh, we've got the supercharger network done. Right, it's good they're, enough. They're like, we want to keep getting better. It's very true. It's super exciting. So in a related solar story, solar has paid its debt. So what does that mean? Well, this was a report that came out recently, and it said that in 1975, there were less than 10,000 solar panels worldwide, or one megawatt okay. of solar. Today, there's about a billion solar panels. And according to this study's co-author, Wilfred van Sark of Utrecht University in the Netherlands, at the end of 2016, we would have about 300 gigawatts installed, or about 1 to 1.5% 1 of the global electricity demand. 
Now, this report said that according to data since 1976, the researchers calculated that on the global scale, solar energy's debt was likely already repaid in 2011 for both the input energy and the greenhouse gases. Now, I need to ask you about that. What does, what does it mean that they have repaid their debt? So when you produce anything, whether it's a widget or a car or a solar panel, you have to input energy into that. There okay. are processes where you have to heat stuff up, cool stuff down, um, you have to carry things, you have to weld things, all sorts of stuff. Right. And that means that you are inputting energy. And where do you get that energy? Well, for a long time, it's been fossil fuels. Gotcha. Um, and that means that you're outputting greenhouse gases. Okay, so even to make something that we think is green, like a solar cell, you're using fossil fuels to make it. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, if you don't have any solar cells to be producing the power, right. how else are you going to make solar cells? Gotcha. I mean, it's kind of a chicken and the egg kind of thing. So I guess the argument for years has been, oh, yeah, you get solar cells on your roof, but it took fossil fuels to make them, so you're not so green. Right. Um, and so what this study is basically saying is that solar panels as a whole have repaid for themselves by 2011 um, because when you produce a solar panel and you put it outside it immediately starts basically offsetting what it has, you know, the energy that it costs to create it. There is a point where they pay themselves off. I mean, it's usually, you know, within a year or two, right. depending on your yeah, solar Yeah, in fact, climate. they did say in this, uh, most, uh, most solar systems that you put on your roof today are paid off in terms of their fossil fuel debt in one year. Which is great, and it, it means that solar as a whole has basically repaid it for itself. Right. And that means going forward that you're going to be able to lower the cost and the, you know, the climate impact of new solar installations. And and technology and further advancements in manufacturing means that we can produce them more efficiently and cheaper. So for instance, in 1976, one would have paid about $80 or 75 euros at today's rates uh, for one watt peak unit okay. compared to about 64 to 67 US cents. Wait, so today. it was in it 1976 was, it was 80 bucks? 80 bucks. And now it's 67 now it's cents? 67 cents. Wow. Now the authors found that for every doubling in solar capacity installed, energy used to produce those solar panels decreased by 12 to 13 percent and greenhouse gas emissions dropped by 17 to 24 percent depending on the material used. Now, that confused me a little bit. So that means that every time the world doubles its solar cell capacity, mm -hmm. the price that it costs to make and the, and the energy that it costs to make drops by considerable amount. Right, so that's, amount. that's the technology that we're working on. And it, but it also means the energy that you're using might not be coming from a coal plant. It could be right. coming from a solar panel, which means that you're, you're further decreasing the amount of energy. Gotcha. So it's just going to keep getting better. It, Yes, essentially. That's Unless awesome. we throw out all of our uh, solar panels. Let's please don't do that. So California has put the brakes on new power plants. Uh, the LA Department of Water and Power announced Tuesday that it has put on hold a $2.2 billion plan to rebuild several old natural gas power plants while it studies clean energy alternatives. I guess what, what happened here was that um, the California Energy Commission has figured out that they don't need to build or rebuild a lot of these uh, natural gas plants because they're already using less energy than they have. And they've also started producing a lot more energy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is coming a lot from solar panels. Also recently, the, the price of energy in California has been going up, which a lot of people are like, uh, why is the price of electricity going up if we have more power than we need? And so this is why they're looking at um, you know, not rebuilding these peaker plants because they aren't going to really need them in the future. Right. Um, it would be a lot smarter. It would be a lot smarter to capture um, a lot of this solar energy, which is produced during the day, and store it and use it, you know, for the rest of the time. Because a lot of this solar energy that's getting uh, collected doesn't get stored. No, it gets curtailed. It just gets thrown away. And and now basically is the first time in history that there's an option to store it. Right. Up until was, now, people were like, well, what do you what do you want us to do with this energy? We right. can't do anything with it. Right. I mean, it's, it, this is a good news. This is really this good is a good news. problem to have. Yeah. Oh, we don't need to build these peaker plants. That's a good problem. Excellent problem. It means that all that money, we just talked about $2.2 .2 billion that we were planning on spending. Right. Could Maybe that could be going to Tesla. Right. That could be going into batteries, um, storage, and, and, and other you know solutions to um, this energy storage problem. France seeks to raise the price of carbon. Emmanuel Macron 
Uh, the newly elected president of France has reached out to Angela Merkel, the chancellor of Germany, um, and they have a plan to raise the minimum price per ton of CO2 emissions uh, to 30 euros or to about 33 and a half dollars. And to give some perspective, if they did raise it to 30 euros per ton, that would add about two cents per kilowatt hour to natural gas, mm -hmm. three and a half cents per kilowatt hour to coal, and 30 cents per gallon for gasoline. Wow. So in the UK, by introducing a levy of 18 pounds or $22.88 per ton of CO2 emissions, the UK has cut coal electricity production to 10% from 30% in just two years. Wow, and so this isn't even at $30 per ton, this is at $22.88 per ton. Right. So it shows that it works. When you raise the true cost of, of burning coal mm -hmm. or gasoline or oil, you actually lower the usage of it because then you it begins to be more of a cost effective to go to solar or wind or some other renewable. Absolutely. Um, so we've been talking a lot about Autopilot 2. Um, it has finally come into parity with Autopilot 1 and so now there, this new update that Elon has just tweeted about. He said, um, excited about the Tesla Autopilot software release rolling out next month. New control algorithm feels smooth as silk. Ooh. So, um, what does that mean? This is a new control algorithm. Basically, uh, when you're in auto steer, it should feel smooth as silk. So Ooh. no more like. And so this is just for autopilot two cars. So we're not going to know what that feels. We're like. We're not going to know what that feels like. We're going to have to ask so, someone with autopilot two. Well, let's ask. So I mean, um, this is going to be rolling out in the next week or so. So if you have an autopilot two car and you get the update, please let us know if it starts to feel as smooth as silk. I assume it takes a little while, mm -hmm. um, right, for the car to learn and stuff. But yeah, let us know in upcoming episodes. Comment about what it feels like. Also, but yeah, this is not the only thing that is being updated. Oh, what else? There's also going to be um, perpendicular auto parking. Oh, right, because that's what Autopilot 1 has. Right, and there's also going to be um, auto display brightness. So oh, is that on your screen? That's on your screen, so it'll get uh, brighter or dimmer depending on the time of oh, day. Oh, nice, so you don't have to think like about it. Mm -hmm. Right, and it, it, I've just learned um, that it reacts to your manual input. So if you're like, the screen is too bright, let me turn that down, it'll remember that. It'll be like, oh, when the when it's this bright out, oh wow! You know, Zach doesn't like it when it's when it's this bright. He wants it it's, this bright. You know, getting it, smarter. It learns what you want. Um, and then the last thing in this update is also uh, full speed automatic emergency braking. So before it was just some it was uh, limited by speed. Now it's going to be um, available at all speeds. Nice. So really are getting up to full parity with Autopilot One. Right. You can now get a Tesla for thirty five grand. Whoa. Right. The Model Three. Nope, the Model S. Wait, really? Yeah. Tesla has just released a whole slew of pre-owned or used Model S's on their website that are way less than forty thousand dollars. Wow, that's yeah, check amazing. Check these out. I mean, obviously, a lot of these don't have autopilot, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have high mileage. But all the cars that they sell as used are going to have a full inspection. Their remaining battery and drive warranty are going to be under warranty for at least two years or a hundred thousand miles maximum. Um, and they're all going to get 24-hour roadside assistance. Wow, so that's that's great. If you're on the list for the Model 3... And you can't wait. And you can't wait. Or, I mean, you just need a car. I mean, you just want a Tesla so bad, which a lot of people do. This could be a great option. Yeah, and let me remind you, even a high-mileage Model S is made of aluminum, and it has very few moving parts, so it's not like a high-mileage ICE car, which is probably ready to fall apart. These right. are cars that have many more years of life in them. So, I mean, that's a great option. Yeah, go check wanna, that out. If you want to get out of my way on the Model 3 <laughs> list, go right ahead. Go nuts. So if you live in Europe, you might have been uh, waiting to hear from Hyperloop 1 about if there's going to be any plans for Hyperloops in your neck of the woods, and it appears that there are. So um, they just released nine new possible routes. So there's one in uh, Germany. Okay. There's an Estonia-Finland line. Ooh, nice. There's a Spain-Morocco line. Ooh. There's a Corsica-Sardinia line. Wow. One of the ideas is uh, in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. Poland, and three in the UK. There's a Scotland to Wales, a Northern Arc route connecting Glasgow to Liverpool through Manchester, and then just a North-South connector between London and Edinburgh. I want to ride all of these. I know. This could be, I mean... You know, train travel used to be, you know, the, the most romantic travel mm -hmm. experience or whatever. I can't wait till it's Hyperloop. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot different. I doubt there's going to be any sleeper cabins. Yeah, so, I mean, it, instead of playing movies in the Hyperloop, I feel like they're going to have to show really short sitcoms or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just one episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> 
and, and then and then boom, you're in London. <laughs> this next story is about clean EVs. For the longest time, people have claimed that even when you plug in your EV, you're actually just as dirty as a gas car. Or more dirty. Or more dirty because your electricity has to come from like coal plants and stuff. Right. The Union for Concerned Scientists has just come up with their updated uh, map and we're showing it here. The last map was based on 2009 data from the EPA. Mm -hmm. This new map is based on 2014 data. So it's still not completely up right. to date. But even with this old data, it's showing that EVs have gotten a whole lot cleaner. There's been a huge jump so that, for instance, if you're charging in New England, let's say, you, the equivalent that you're getting in your EV is about 109 miles per gallon equivalent. Um, and so that since there is no gas car with that miles per gallon, you're basically getting at least three times more uh, energy efficiency right. than those cars. So it's showing that no matter where, I mean, look at this map, no matter where you plug in, you can't find a nice car that's more energy efficient than this. Right. This sort of goes against the argument that EVs are coal burners, that they, you know, are worse for the environment than traditional internal combustion engine cars. I'm really glad that they came up with this because it basically debunks a whole bunch of really crappy arguments. Yeah, I mean, remember, TVs. we just we debunked the Adam ruins everything argument just a few months ago, right, um, where he basically used this argument of, oh, well, it's a coal burner. So right. it's worse for the environment. And what we said at the time was your data is out, outdated. And th even this data is outdated, but at least it's more recent right. um, and it just shows that I mean, we're, we're getting so our energy grid is getting so clean so fast that now when you plug in even in the worst state you're still way more clean than you would be driving a nice car. Right. And I mean, this comes from solar. This comes from wind projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are just moving to renewables like crazy because it is way cheaper than than drilling into the ground, pumping crap out of the ground, yes. refining the crap, shipping it to places, you know, then putting it into your car. It, I mean, it's just so much nicer to be using renewables and it's so much cleaner. And what I want you to do is take this link Put it in your favorites, and anytime someone stops you and says, well, your Tesla's not that clean, send them that link. Yeah. That's, there's your proof. Boom. So this next story is kind of an exclusive to us. Um, one of our viewers, who's a car designer in Holland, uh, sent us this picture right here, which shows a Model S and a Model 3. They're both to scale. And if you look at these two lines, those two lines are the demarcations for the cabin. So mm -hmm. what is this showing us? This picture would show that the Model 3 and the Model S cabins are equivalent in size basically that you're going to have the same amount of cabin space wow so it looks like the model 3 has a slightly shorter front and a slightly shorter back but that the cabin stayed the same so i guess what this designer is trying to show us is that when you get into the cabin of the model 3 it's going to feel a lot like the model s right i'm not entirely convinced that this is 100 uh, percent accurate i'm going to be honest but i think that you know, we should put this out to our commenters. You know, what do you think? Do you think that the Model 3 is going to have the same size cabin as the Model S? Do you think that it's going to not matter? Do you think that you're going to get more space because of that glass roof? What, what, are, you, what are your opinions on that? And also, uh, we want to show you some video here of some possible 007 wheels. Now, what, what are 007 wheels? Um, these were wheels that we saw at the um, unveiling of the Model 3. They were on, I think, the matte black car. They looked really good. Mm -hmm. And we just saw these on a Model 3 that was spotted in California. Now, do you think that this is something that would be like an early reservation holder perk? I think that it could be, you know, the first day reservation holder perk. I think that this would be something that would be pretty cool. I would I would actually want this. Like, I know that I want unlimited supercharging. If they offered that, that would be great. But I mean, I think I would take these wheels. These wheels look really good. And why Anything. are they called the 007 wheels? Just, you know, really really cool looking. <laughs> so whenever anything's cool looking, we just label it 007. James Bond is pretty cool. Okay, but there's a lot of other cool people out there. I but... agree. I'm just, this is like, this is a James Bond level of cool, I think. Oh, okay. Um, so there's also another Model 3 sighting. Uh, this person, bless them, uh, got wonderful pictures of the yeah. Model 3. Um, we didn't learn anything new, but it is nice to see some actual high-res pictures of the car. Yeah, um, the they, charge port. They got it supercharging. Um, they tried to peek in um, at, to see the steering wheel and the screen, um, but they were both covered with uh, jackets. Tesla jackets. Um, so apparently they don't want us to see that. Mm. But we can see, you know, just a really good view of the car. But the charge port looks like it has just, it just seems really big to me, the, the door size and the and the the area that's so taken up that's just this little little yeah. you know plug for such a big area it's maybe there'll be an option down the road to get um you know a second kind of charger in there like for an, for additional fee or something 
Maybe, or maybe it's for Europe. I mean, I'm maybe, not, I'm yeah, not maybe it's just so that they sure. can. Because you're right. Because in Europe, there's a different plug, so maybe it's just so that they can configure it differently. Um, so every week, we love to talk about our viewer comments because we get so many and they're so good. Last week, we had asked you guys for your thoughts on Chinese tariffs on solar panels, and we got lots of cool comments. We're just going to pick this one here because it was really kind of interesting. This is from Professor O Magic. He says import issues are very hard to implement. It turns out subsidizing bee farmers in the U.S. to counteract lax regulations in China is more effective than banning honey from China. Hmm. It was profitable for companies to buy honey in China, filter it so that it was anonymous, package it outside of China, say in India, then ship it again to the U.S. as an Indian product, which it technically is. If the U.S. isn't competitive with China, we need to know why and address that directly because import taxes are cash flow positive for the government, but they tend to create weird rule structures that have a negative impact on the free market. They make unreasonable business models profitable. So I think that this is a really good point. Um, we got lots of great comments about this. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talking about how um, you know, it should just be a free market. A lot of people saying that this is going to put U.S. companies out of business. I mean, I'm not entirely sure where I stand on this, but it, it does seem like putting a tariff on... Uh, imported Chinese solar panels is kind of opening up this area for you know for loopholes for loopholes yeah and, and it also like it's it's a quick fix but it doesn't like this commenter is mentioning it's um, it doesn't really dive deep into questioning why why are the Chinese able to produce them cheaper is it they're doing it at a loss just to put us out of business or is it because they have a better model for how to produce them right and I mean some people are saying that basically China is subsidizing cheaper solar panels for the world which right. maybe I we mean, should they let kind them of are, and we kind of should let them and here's my point America subsidizes oil companies right and it's like right so I mean, doesn't that mean that a chinese company would be at a disadvantage if they wanted to start their own oil company because right. the u.s is subsidizing you know oil it just seems like i don't know we have so many silly rules you know free market would probably yield the most efficient solar panels and the other thing is when we raise the price of solar panels artificially by putting a tariff on them from china mm -hmm. we're forcing american buyers to pay more for their solar panels so we're hurting american consumers right we're lowering the amount of competition that american solar panel manufacturers basically should be facing because we should be trying to produce better right or maybe we should be increasing our subsidies instead of putting a tariff on the chinese manufacturers maybe we should subsidize our american manufacturers like the chinese do so that we can compete that way right that uh, that way we'd be giving a level playing field right and this is what was brought up in the comment but basically subsidize the american right uh producers don't tariff the chinese don't tariff the chinese i kind of i'd like to lean that way myself right because especially we, since we're doing it with other we industries. do it with oil right let's we, do, we it do it with solar we do it with corn we do it with soybeans we do it with milk we, we choose things kind of Willy arbitrarily yeah. anyway why don't we choose solar panels right all right for the fun topic of superchargers so first i just want to give a big thanks to everyone who is um you know filmed their supercharger locations their local or otherwise yeah you know you can do this right you can go out there and film a review of a supercharger for us make sure you film it in the um, landscape landscape nice mode. rectangle Not that mode yeah because um, it looks a whole lot better and make it short make it sweet but show us like the whole surrounding area anything of interest to you right. like was it easy to get there right and also destination chargers yes. so i mean you can go onto tesla's website and see the map of destination chargers there's right. almost certainly one near you yes um and it's usually going to be like at a hotel or in Restaurant. some cases some really cool place yeah we would love to see those because i mean those are places that tesla owners can go to and charge yeah i mean it's just a great place and usually because it's a destination charger it's at a destination exactly we would love to see those as well um so again all you have to do shoot like a 20 or 30 second uh video of you at the supercharger um you know talk about what's around there we would love to see them so here are this week's uh, supercharger reviews. Hi Zach, Jesse and the uh, everyone in the uh, Tesla world. Now I'm in Wendoree in Ballarat, Victoria at our new supercharger as you can see behind me. So there's not much here close by for your actual convenience of a late night so recommend being down in the main part of Ballarat after you've recharged which is only a five minute drive from here. 
Hey Zach and Jesse, it's Steve from Rochester, New York. I'm a Model 3 reservation holder and a huge fan of your show. Um, I am here at the brand new Supercharger in Victor, New York. And it just opened up and it's right in front of a mall here behind me. It's literally two or three minutes off of the New York State Thruway. So uh, it's super, super convenient. Um, I, I've only been to three superchargers in my life. This is by far the best location that I've seen. So you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. Hey, fellas. Uh, I'm Tim Garrison here in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I believe we have our only supercharger that is uh, right here at the St. Vincent Mall. Right behind me, of course, is the, uh, the mall. A lot of different places where you can shop, eat. A lot of places where you can eat, no doubt about that. So about eight stalls right there. Again, I'm Tim Garrison and uh, Supercharger, Shreveport, Louisiana. Thanks, fellas. Bye. Hey, Jesse and Zach. I bring you with me to the first Supercharger of Barcelona, Spain. Everything is almost ready and will open in a few days to have 12 stalls. And it's very near to the highway. Unfortunately, there are only an hotel nearby, so nothing else reachable by walk other than the National Park. So if you arrive by daylight, you can take a walk and do some bird watching like me. So you're welcome in Barcelona. See you! Hi guys, best regards from Poland. A test supercharger near Wrocław. I don't know if you are aware of this or, or not, but uh, superchargers in Poland are being installed at the gas stations, as you can see, with consent uh, with uh, National Petroleum Corporation, again, Orland. So, once again, best regards. Uh, looking forward to next episodes, more superchargers and upcoming Model 3. Bye. Thank you so much. Those are awesome to see. And now we want to get on to the list of permitted superchargers this week. So the first one is in Sorkjosen, Norway. The next permitted supercharger is in Santa Fe, Spain. The next one is in La Blitzohe, Austria. Emporia, Kansas. And under construction this week in Lavik, Norway. Paul, France. Charlottesville, Virginia. Vevier, uh, Belgium. Slavonitsky, Broad, Croatia. Aberdeen, Maryland. Seklum, Washington. And one supercharger is open in Houston, Zolder, Belgium. Oh, good, good pronunciation. I, think. I hope so. I think every week we love to thank our Patreon supporters, and this week we want to give a big shout out to Les McKinnon, Larry Enochsen, and Dale Orthner. Thank you so much for everything that you do for our channel. It makes it possible for us to do pretty much everything we're doing right now. Except for one thing. Oh, yeah? Um, we still have to get to the semi unveiling event. Oh, that's right. Um, unfortunately, we need our do? lovely Patreon supporters can't get us there okay. alone. All right, what do uh, we need? We need people to use our referral code. Okay, but we can't, we can't can only do you. that with friends. We can only do that with friends, so we need more friends. So we've already used up three of our five referral codes. We've only got two left. Right, and we're doing a giveaway. We're giving away some of our perky prizes. Oh yeah, we're giving away the, tw uh, giving away the 21 inch arachnid wheels the uh, Model S for kids, yep. and we're giving away the solar roof perk, which moves you up to the front of the line. Right. So all those are going to be given away to, to the, our friends, to the five friends. So that's like a 60% chance of winning. Right. Um, but we need two more referrals to get us to go to the semi unveiling event, which Elon right. just said is going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yes. So, and if you let us go there, we will do our best to tell you everything about what we learned. Right. That we can without the NDA. Right. So message us. Tell us something about ourselves so that we know that you're our friends and uh, then we'll be friends with you and then we can share our code with you. All right, so thank you so much for watching this episode of Tesla Time News. Um, you can definitely check out some of our older episodes. Um, most of this news is still still fresh, oh, that's true. I would say. Um, you can also check out our in-depth. We just had an in-depth last uh, uh, yesterday, actually, yep. about uh, the shareholders meeting with Elon. Um, and we've got tons more stuff. We just um, met with all the other Tesla YouTubers. Um, oh, yeah. The, a, few, a couple exceptions. Um, we did some interviews. We, uh, we show you around the city. Yeah, show you around. We went to San Francisco. So go check all that we stuff shot out. shot things in slow-mo. It looked really good. Thank you for <laughs> our, uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters for getting us that new camera. So thank you so much for watching. Now, now you, you know. know.
Larry Anoxen? 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 Labnitz Hohe? Labnitz Hohe. Labnitz Hohe. Labnitz Hohe. How do you get that sound? Labnitz? Labnitz? This is for the blooper reel.